Hello you gorgeous individuals. Welcome to a discussion about the season so far. So you know on Spurred On we usually do funny stuff, we're quite pranksters, but today we're gonna have an actual in-depth conversation about how it's actually gone. Do we think it's gone well? Do we think it's gone bad? And today I am joined by sports journalist Emma Story. I mean, she's worked with the likes of Fox, Sky Sports News, Sky News. She's a season ticket holder for Spurs, huge Spurs fan, and she's from Edmonton originally. How you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm all right, I'm all right. Good. I'm also joined by uh, Reese, who has uh, worked with... Um, he worked with... <laughs> I used to have a blog. Hey, mate. He has a blog. <laughs> Reese. All right. So, guys, let's throw it out there straight away. Um, how has the season gone? We'll start with you, Emma. Well, it's hard to not be happy about the way things are after 10 games. I mean, first things first, let's look at the unbeaten run. I mean, not since losing on the opening day of the season. It's just been draw, win, draw, mm. draw, draw, win, win, draw. I mean, for us, this level of consistency is fairly unprecedented because let's face it, we're used to being bloody amazing one minute, really terrible the next, you know? Yeah. yeah. The lovely consistentness of this season is actually something to be really pleased with. And I think it's actually something that's really improved since Poch took over. Do you think it's, I don't want to pin it all down to one player, but Toby Alderweireld has yeah. played a huge yeah. Well, I do that. think that. I think it's our defence. It's the first time I've felt sure about our defence for years as a Spurs fan. Yeah. It's that partnership in the middle. Also, there's a bit of strength in depth on right back and left back yeah. uh, where we've got options and we've got competition. Centre back, I still think we're a little bit short. We're a little bit lacking. We could do mm. with a, we could do with a sub because I don't like Fazio. Uh, Dyer can Does drop anyone? back there, but I don't want to lose Dyer in centre mid. Vimmer's looked all right. Vimmer's looked all right. Vimmer's looked all right, but I still like you. You. You'd be gutted if one of them got injured. Yeah, Toby or, Toby yeah I mean, you talk about defence and it really is like the kind of, it's really weird to say this as a Spurs fan, but it's sort of the bedrock of our success so far. I mean, mm. you know, we've only conceded eight goals this season. Yeah. Eight, when was the last time we conceded less goals than games we'd played? This is very strange. Oh. And we scored them as well, like a plus eight goal difference at this that stage of the crazy. season. That's absolutely insane. That's absolutely insane. What did we finish on last year? Like plus five or yeah, something? Yeah, completely, completely like, like after 40 odd games, whereas now. And we always have that thing, if we're, if we're looking for fourth and fifth and stuff, well, we just can't, if we're on the same points, then we just can't compete because yeah. everyone Everyone's around area has got plus better. 20. But I mean, it's really, it's really nice as well because we haven't necessarily been scoring as many goals as, as we would like, you know, City and Bournemouth aside. So to actually be keeping it tight at the back and therefore this not costing us points, it not costing us in the goal difference department yeah. is actually, again, a really big positive. Yeah, yeah. and it feels like uh, our spine is very strong. So if you go straight down the middle, we've got Lloris, we've got Alderweireld and Batongan. We've got Ericsson, Harry Kane. A strong spine is like the central thing for a team. Yeah. And that's and what we were addressed. missing. That's what we were missing yeah. for ages was not having that kind of strength down the middle. You know, it's kind of like stopped at the race and then maybe Vertonghen if he was feeling all right and having a good day and then it sort of stopped. Whereas now, like you said, it really feels like we've got a strong core, a really mm. exciting core. And obviously when we were talking about, um, you know, the setup of the defence as well. The success of, you know, Eric Dyer and Deli Ali yeah. as the um, central defensive mid partnership, I think, has actually done a huge amount to help protect our back four yeah. um, and help them out. All right, so we spoke about the defence and how much of a key role it's played this season. What about going forward? How do we compare it to last season, this season, going forward, attacking wise? At the moment, I don't know, because we've scored quite a lot of goals. I don't know. At the moment, Harry Kane looks like maybe he's coming back. So that's good. Yep. He's not yet lived up to the dizzy heights of last year. Mm. Um, Ericsson looks like he's even better at free kicks than last year, which is great. But Ericsson sort of had a slow start, was out for a bit. Um, Son looks good, but again, he's injured. And we don't yeah. really know how long for. And that's a bit worrying. Oh, We're is. missing Chadley. But I don't think Chadley's looked really up to it this year. Uh, I don't think Lamella's been playing great, although he's mm. already got like more assists Ooh. and goals than he Ooh. had. He's been playing OK. He's been Ooh. playing better than he ever has before. Just right there, Emery is a huge <laughs> fan of Eric Lamella. I still wouldn't say he's playing a £30 million worth of football. Yeah. No, he's not, but give him time. I mean, I think what I'm really pleased about, I know we're going to talk about you know players that have been a big success story this season already, but the development of Eric Lamella this season, the improvement from he last season to this season yeah. is yeah. unreal. And it his really work rate, is. I think yeah, just the, the work rate the effort's is there. improved. Yeah. That's I, why people aren't going mad. Well, the thing is, it's the really weird thing, you know, I was talking to you guys about this earlier, like, all the pressure's been on Harry Kane in terms mm. of his performances. He's been under so much scrutiny and everyone's going, oh, second season syndrome, oh, he was just a flash in the pan, yada, 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 all that time he wasn't scoring. And what it's enabled everyone to do is not be looking at Lamella and what Lamella's doing and people not going, oh, Spurs record signing is doing, you know, bugger all. Yeah. Um, and it's enabled him to relax, I think, and try a little less hard because that's what I felt with a lot of his performances last season. He was trying too hard. He wanted to do so many flashy things that yeah. he would end up, you know, giving the ball away nine times out of ten. Whereas now I feel like he's settled down, he's calmed down, he's not under so much scrutiny that he's actually able to just kind of chill out and actually 
do the simple things well and yeah, obviously yeah. he's also learnt to get his foot in. Not necessarily, um, you know, I mean, in a good time not, anyway, yeah, but, not always, <laughs> not always get the good, ball. But it's good to see the attitude, it's good to see the fight because again, I think he was a little bit lightweight in that department last yeah. season. Definitely. Um, let's talk about the fact that we, I mean, other than the fact that we beat Bournemouth 5-1, yeah. there hasn't been a lot of goals. Let's face facts. Man talk. City. Man City, yeah, that was Two of them were offside. I went to both <laughs> games, by the way. Um, oh, yeah, no, we have Just haven't... so you get that in there. Yeah. Lucky <laughs> charm, lucky charm. Yeah, a lot of goals, so I am going to the Emirates <laughs> somehow. Um, <laughs> We haven't scored a lot of goals other than those two games. No. Um, obviously, Harry Kane, he dried up a bit, but he seems to have found a bit of form, hopefully. Um, other people have chipped in. Ericsson pretty much got us the draw against Swansea, yeah. if we're honest. Yeah. But, I mean, is it a big thing? Because for me personally, the fact that we only have one out-and-out -out striker is worrying for We're me. lacking depth. We're lacking depth up there. And G doesn't seem quite ready. Mm. I feel like next year in G will be class, but at the moment, he's still, he, he's putting in good effort. He was good when he came on, I thought, against Bournemouth. Mm. Getting up there, had a chance pretty much instantly. Um, but yeah, he's still a bit raw, he's like we've been saying. Right now, isn't he? Yeah, he is in the butchers. Very <laughs> nice. <He is laughs> very nice butchers. expression. It is, I must admit, my big concern. And like when everyone starts banging on about whether we're going to finish in the top four and all the rest of it, I think that is actually where our major weakness is. I don't think we do mm. score enough goals. Um, obviously, Harry now may rectify that. You know, he's got his confidence. He's got his goal scoring touch back, which I think was missing mm. in a previous few games. But still, I don't feel overall what? going forward we contribute enough. And I think that's actually a worry for us. What if he gets injured, though? I mean, exactly. right now, even at Bournemouth, <laughs> yeah. his knee was strapped up yeah. like mine. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, well, what if that progresses to something more serious? Well, Who, this what are we going to do? This is the problem, and this is the issue that we had when we didn't sign a striker in the summer, as in an out-and-out out striker. Who needs to take Not the fault for forward. that? Who needs to Not take the fault forward. for that? Is it Levy's fault? I, I don't, do don't want to well, play the blame game. No, but. but it is Levy's fault, bottom line. Like, Pochettino was very clear about the fact that even if Berahino was his second choice, he was his only second choice, and that was who he wanted. And Levy cocked it up for want of a better word with the way he treated West Brom and the mm. way he went about his negotiations and I don't think West Brom covered themselves in glory yeah. either quite frankly I but mean, I do think you have I to pay the bait for leaving yeah, because I mean, Poch was very clear we tried yeah. to go in for Ings early before he was even allowed Ings to leave but he Ings, wanted to go, Ings wanted to go to yeah. Liverpool there was nothing we could do about that we came in with the money gave the offer Ings was like I want to go to Liverpool which is you know fine did we inquire for Marshall a bit kind of but then we he signed did. a new contract yeah but he wanted to go eat again if United are coming in but, but also, at this time, he didn't. The, the Man United thing wasn't no, on the table. But he just signed a new contract, and it was like he's not leaving. He signed right. a new contract, right. but they also wanted. We bid like twenty odd or twenty-one million, I think it was for him, and they wanted in Something the region ridiculous. of thirty-five, and we were like, no way. And then obviously, United have come yeah. and paid it, which you know, again, fair enough. We're so not that's the thing. So we we kind of had the options there. They got batted away, and then we were kind of almost left to bury, you know, to do late business. Or you think we should have just got wrapped up early? I something. think we should have just got. Well, I think Levy should have been a bit um, less disrespectful with his negotiating. Mm, I think trying yeah. to pay five million up front for. An English striker yeah. of any description this? is, no, is, is not not great. And then they <laughs> wanted to take in instalments, didn't he? They wanted a, well, a, to large, be fair, a most, large sum up front. Most deals do go in instalments. Yeah. Um, that in itself is not an issue. I think it was more the initial upfront payment which really was taking the mick. And uh, you know, West Brom then went public, all got rubbed up the wrong way, all got a bit nasty. Berahino wanted to go, and it was it's all just messy and it was embarrassing for both clubs. So I think we need to just forget about that. But that's who I would put the blame on for not having a striker. This mm. thing this is though, summer. if we can last till January with this sort of form yeah. and do all right, stay relatively unbeaten. I mean, we're going to have to take a few defeats between now and January. Avoid injuries. Oh, yeah, Why? Avoid, Why do we have to take defeats? Injuries. We don't have, well, <laughs> I don't want to draw every game. Uh, I get a few wins and stuff. Keep, you know, relatively consistent yep. until January and then sign a striker. Mm. Yeah then we're fine. That is the worry, though, because it starts getting tougher in November. And it is already, we're seeing now the fact that both Sun and Chadley are injured. Yeah. We're already seeing our kind of forward options are starting to be yeah. a little bit limited. So it is a worry, and you do kind of hope that they just keep wrapping Kane up in cotton wool in the hope yeah. that he'll be fine. All right, so we spoke about the defence uh, strengthening. We spoke about attacking. Now let's talk about our goals for the season. What are the realistic goals for the season uh, for you, Rhys? You know what? <sighs> I don't, I'm not one of the Spurs fans who says this every year. I don't think fourth is unrealistic this year. Okay. okay? When you look at the rest of the league, Chelsea. look at how we're playing. Chelsea, did you know that no team in history who has had under 13 points after 10 games has ever finished in the top four, and Chelsea have 11? I heard they the haven't moment. finished above eighth. Really? Team, yeah, that's team with that many points. Ross Berry, that's what Chelsea, you're talking they're gonna, Chelsea are going to have to get rid of Mourinho pretty quickly if they want a chance of finishing the top four, I think. You reckon, you reckon they should get I'm, I wouldn't want to turn it into that debate. That but you think I'm top four should be a, a target? A I cup? think top four should be a target. I don't know about a cup. I mean, maybe Europa League. Maybe we should be looking at trying to win the Europa League. Uh, but Tongan said himself, he thinks... We've missed opportunities in the past and we really are sort of good enough to win it and we should be doing better than we are. Mm. Uh, and then we go and lose to Anderlecht straight after he said oh. that. Uh, a bit awkward. Um, but I don't know. I'm not that bothered about a cup, to be honest. I just think oh, if we can get... Don't like a parade? 
I love it. Listen, oh, wow. everyone knows I love a parade, okay? Love a bit of bubbly, you do. <laughs> I love, love a bit of, you know, whatever Craig's talking about. Love a bit of bubbly, love a parade, uh, except when Jack Wilshire's on the bus. But I just think I'd rather have fourth, you know? It's an ex weird, mm. exciting team. We're a young team. If they get fourth, if they have like a season long thing that gets them fourth, which, like, are we really that worried about West Ham and Leicester? Yeah. They're all going to fade at Christmas. Like, West Ham have got a couple of good players and mm. they're all being lifted by Payet. And Leicester are just like, Jamie Vardy's just mm. doing it all, but he'll get injured or something. I'm going to come over to you, Emma, quickly. I just want to ask. Yeah. Arsenal win the league and we get fourth, or they don't win the league and we don't get fourth. What would you rather happen? Oh, God. You know what? What would you actually rather Ooh. happen? You know what? That first one is, is so Spursy that that would happen. Arsenal, well, what would you we rather? We get fourth. I, d I mean, we got to stop looking at other people. I'd rather we got fourth. I'd rather we succeeded than anything else. Oh, all right, cool. Emma, your thoughts? What's the realistic goal for this See, season? See, I am the complete opposite to you. I don't care at all about the league. We could finish 10th as long as we win a trophy. I want Whoa. some silverware in that cabinet. And I would like it, obviously, to be the Europa League okay. because that gets us a Champions League place, which yeah. sort of eliminates that whole argument. It's like, I'm sorry, and I know Arsenal have perpetuated this myth that you get a trophy for coming fourth, but you don't. There is no mm. trophy. There is no glory. No one is really going to remember the fact that you finished fourth. I mean, people but already if, forget it about Redknapp. Are any players, did it in terms of getting signings in and stuff, are any players bothered that you won the FA Cup? But they would be if you won the Europa League. Yeah, Europa League, fine, Europa League. But would you take finishing 10th and winning the FA Cup? I probably would, actually. I want a trophy. I want to go to Wembley and I want to celebrate. Really straight, it's a good point, though. Would we attract players? I mean, if we're in the Champions League, we're, we're, we're going to attract the top players. But we're already attracting players now. Mm, we can't get a striker. We, for? we can't get Danny Ings to come to us. <laughs> <laughs> and look how well that's worked out for him so far. Bless him, poor thing. Um, <laughs> you know, I... Maybe I'm very old school about this. I could be. But I miss those days where we were always there and thereabouts and really fighting for actual silverware, actual real things okay. you could hold yeah. on to and say, this is our trophy. We are the best in the country at this, this or this. We're a long way off a title challenge. Yeah. So why would we not want to actually win something? Good contrasting opinions yeah. here. Anyway, guys, let us know in the comments below what you think of the season, how it's gone so far. What are the key standout points for you? What should be our goals for the season? Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that little red button and you know what to do. Keep it casual. Hello, welcome to Spurvert. I'm here with Craig Mitch. How are you yeah, doing? Yeah, I could be better, but I'm happy still. Got his knee all strapped up. Yeah. Thinks he's a pro footballer. No, Stone Cold Steve Mitch, actually. 